And now what we're going to see is we, we want to create a place to store these files within our SharePoint site. Now we can store these. These really are Excel files, so we can store them in a document library. But we also have something new we can choose. And the reason we have something new is we've got this power pivot for SharePoint integration configured. So let's just take a look at some things here. Let's just take a look at how we can turn this stuff on. So I'm going to come in here to my site collection features. And we see Power Pivot feature integration for site collections. Okay, so that's that's active. Now we wouldn't have that feature available to activate if we didn't have you know, all of that stuff configured at the farm level. So now that we have that active, if I come in here to my create screen, in addition to a standard document library, we're going to see another option under libraries. And what we're going to see here is called the Power Pivot Gallery. It's a special document library for storing these pivot tables. And it gives us some additional views on how we can look inside of the files themselves. So I'm just going to create this pivot table, or I'm sorry, this pivot library. And now what I'm going to do, just like any other document library, we can add files to the library. So I'm just going to upload those two uh, pivot table uh, power pivot files that I created, one pivot chart and one pivot table. So we'll just upload those two files into this gallery. And what we'll see is just a different way that we can we can kind of display this information if we want to. And it shouldn't take much longer. They're almost uploaded. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to see is we're looking at these two files being displayed in this different format. And the format that we're seeing that's different is because of a different view. We're looking at something that we, we get with um, this Power Pivot Gallery, and it's called the Gallery View. So that's what we're looking at right now. Now, it's going to take a little while, but um, eventually it's going to update, and we'll actually see a representation of the internal data here when we look at these images. We can also look at some other new views that we get. One is the theater. So what it's showing us down below are the different files and the different worksheets from the different files that we could choose to look at. And above, we see whichever one is selected being, you know, being displayed. And of course, if we click over, it just changes the focus. We've also got another view called the carousel view. And this is kind of like uh, if you use an iPod you know, and you're shuffling through the different albums you have in your songs. It kind of looks a little bit like that. It spins around. And again, it's showing us the different workbooks and the different sheets you know, within the workbooks that we have loaded into the gallery. So we can just sort of spin around through here and see the different content that we have available. And then in terms of displaying this on our web pages, it's exactly like what we did a little bit earlier when we when we use that Excel web access web parts, we would do the same thing. We would display these different areas. Uh, you know, usually the set we would define a section of our web page that uh, is that particular uh, pivot chart or pivot table, along with the slicers, and then we would display that within our web pages using that Excel web access web part. So that really is our first look at giving something. You know, the user. The user can now, you know, interact with these files right through SharePoint. Um, you know, even without the web parts, we could just come in here and open one of the files up if we wanted to. Let's say load up here. Let's just open this one up here, just to see how through the web interface we can actually uh, do some online analysis. And we do that again through our slicers. So I might decide I just want to look at clothing instead of all categories. And what I've done is essentially when I select that, it's going to then create what is really just a filter of the data, filtering out anything that is not in that category. You see the result here. 
And then what, it, what we see up top is in the subcategories, it's only showing those that are within the selected category. So we see that sort of you know, trickle effect. So I could, if I wanted to, I could choose to filter it through one of the specific subcategories, and there we see it. So that's really where we get our interactivity here. And this is really our first look at a form of online analytic processing.